All right, you guys, switching gears here a little bit. Um, I'm trying to work with you on being able to solve what's called a rational expression, or sorry, equations. Uh, rational, as you guys saw, uh, was something to do with a fraction. Whole numbers can also be rational, because you can write them as a fraction. What they're working towards is, I know that you guys get, if you want to undo, let me even try this one first. If you want to undo a square, you take a square root. But what if you have a square root? How do you undo it? Well, same thing. You square it. Now, there's a different way to represent this. You guys have learned that radicals, this is the same thing as something to the power to the half. And this, uh, if it was a cube root, is to the one-third. All we're suggesting here is another way to approach this is to get rid of this, you raise both sides to the reciprocal power. A heck of a two. Okay, so in other words, you square both sides. Why? Because it's the reciprocal. A half times two is one. And that's what you wanted to solve for, was x to the first power. There you go. This, you'd represent as x squared to the one-third. When you have an exponent on an exponent, you multiply your exponents. So that would be x to the two-thirds equals two. To undo raising something to the two-thirds power, you raise it to the three-halves power. So you get x equals, because when you multiply, uh, yeah, sorry, when you multiply reciprocals, you get 1 equals 2 to the 3 halves. And you just leave it as that, okay? This, you'd raise both sides to the 2 fifths. Now this one's going to be a little bit different than the last one. Why could I leave the last one alone? Well, this number on top is a power. This number on the bottom is a root. Oh, that reminds me, I just caught myself doing something here. Um, if I gave you guys x squared is equal to 17 and I ask you guys to square root both sides, you're supposed to put a plus and a minus with that seven, square root of 17. Whenever you take an even root, a plus and minus shows up, and I missed the plus and minus on this one. That's a square root, so I need to put a plus or a minus with it. So, whoop, I missed it. Here you don't, because you're squaring both sides. You're not square rooting both sides. Like this one would be x is equal to plus or minus three, because I put an even root, a square root in this case, on the page that wasn't there before. I put an even root right there, a square root on the page that wasn't there before. So I need to put a plus and minus. Now, where was I going with this before I realized I made a mistake? Was, um, this says the square root of two. Can you guys simplify the square root of two? I don't think so. Can you reduce the fifth root of 32. So that's the power. This is the root. Okay. So just peeling this off for a second, trying to think of this as you guys are used to, more used to seeing it. You're working with this. I'm ignoring this number here for a minute just to help you work with the fifth root. If you prime factor it, One, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth root of two to the fifth. So what's the fifth root of two to the fifth? Two. Is there a plus and minus? No, because you took an odd root. So how I'm choosing to think of this is 32 to the one-fifth squared. 32 to the one-fifth is the fifth root of 32, which is 2. So I'm left with 2 squared, which is 4. So the answer to this, I'd prefer if you don't leave your answer here, 
because that shows me you understand what this is saying. It's saying, give me the fifth root of 32, 2 squared. Okay? So this, first thing you would do is you need to cut the 15 off of both sides. x to the 2 thirds is equal to, so that would be what, 9? Then you need to get rid of this, so you raise it to the reciprocal power. And what's this on the bottom? It's a square root. Okay, so a plus and minus is going to show up. The square root of 9 is 3 cubed. So that's plus or minus 27. Okay. I can't touch the stuff inside until that exponent's gone. So I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. I don't put a plus and minus because I didn't take the root. The root was given to me. If they wanted you to, when they, if it's given to you, and they wanted you to have a plus and minus, it'd be there. Think of it that way. I didn't put a root on the page. I squared both sides. So I got 2x plus 5 equals 16. Now it's just simply solving. Subtract the 5, divide by 2. There you go. There's your answer. Um, before I can go after this exponent, so what I, the, how I was explaining it all last semester with the kids that I had, and I hope that you guys like seeing it this way, is you're using PEMDAS to solve these equations. And you're doing it from the bottom up. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. You're starting at the bottom, undoing any adding and subtracting. So that means I have to get the 7 thirds to the other side. Subtract it off, so I have 2 minus 7 thirds. So I can do this in my head. I'm going to look at that as 2 minus 2 and a third. Okay? 7 thirds. There's no requirement like there was in middle school that you had that improper fractions are bad. No, I just did that because I was too lazy to pick up my calculator. So I have minus x minus 5 to the 1 quarter power equals negative a third. I need to get rid of this negative. Think of it as a negative 1. It's held by multiplication. So I'm going to divide out the negative 1. So I've got x minus 5 raised to the 1 quarter power is equal to positive a third. Okay. To get rid of this quarter power, I'm going to raise both sides to the fourth power. So I have x minus 5 is equal to 1 to the 4th is 1, 3 to the 4th is 81. Now we add the 5. 5 plus 1 over 81, or x is equal to 5 and 181st. Okay. This one, get rid of the 10. The cube root of x is equal to negative 7. To undo both sides, I need to cube both sides. So x is equal to negative 7 cubed. And if you guys want, you can leave it there. The reason I did it here, where was it? One third. Did I even write it? Oh, I must have scrolled it. It's up here above it, I bet. There it is. The reason I did 3 to the 4th is I'm hoping that you guys can... This took two numbers to write. That takes two numbers to write. Okay, so I think it's a wash. I'd rather see the 81. This one takes two numbers to write here. But if I do it out, let me turn on my calculator quick. Um, 7 cubed. I know it's negative. So that'd be 300, negative 343. You guys can write negative 343 if you want. That takes three numbers to write. This only takes two. So I think that's the break-even point. When it's more condensed to write it like that, by all means, write it like that. But like 2 cubed, that takes two numbers, whereas 8 only takes one. So I think 8's the better answer. Okay? I can't touch the 56 here until I get rid of the root. If I go back to PEMDAS and look at it, I'm solving going up. The, the 56 is inside this exponent, if you want to think of it that way. Think of that as an exponent. It's x plus 56 
exponent to the half power. I can't touch it until that exponent's gone. So I have to get rid of the square root first. So you're going to square both sides. So you have x plus 56 is equal to, um, they're going to want you to subtract that off. So 16 squared, sorry guys, 16 squared is 256. Because I squared both sides, I'm up here. Squared both sides, so I'm come down. Skip this because I just rewrote that to help you see I can't touch the 56. Then I subtract the 56. So you have x is equal to 200. All right? Okay, we're a little bit more complicated. First thing you need to do, subtract the 10. So you have the square root of 6x minus 5 is equal to, so that would be negative 7. Now right here, this is a problem. An even root cannot equal a negative number. It's just not possible. It can't happen. So even though you would go, all right, uh, switch to blue. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of this root. So you'd have 6x minus 5. Negative 7 squared is positive 49. Add the 5. 6x is equal to, what would that be? 54. Divide by 6. That's a 4, not a 9. Come on. Let's go. Divide by 6 and you get 9. Take 9 and put it back in the problem. 6 times 9 minus 5, that's 54 minus 5 is 49, and it's in the square root. So square root of 49 is 7. 7 plus 10 is not 3. You see, it doesn't work. So there's no solution to this problem. And how I knew that, backing up and showing you it again, is right here at this point. We had this even root, a square root in this case, equals negative 7. An even root cannot equal a negative number. It's against the rules. Okay? It's just, it, you can't do it. An odd root certainly can. That's fine. Okay? Um, this is back tied into that i, it's similar to i. It's saying something times itself, something times itself is negative 7. It's not going to happen. Okay? Something times something is negative 7. Nope. If it's got to be the same number, it's not going to happen. Okay? So there's no real solution to this. The question is bogus right there. It's a bad question. It shouldn't have been asked. It's an illegal question. All right. When you've got variables on both sides, this is what I need to get rid of first before I can start collecting the, the variables. So you need to square both sides. So that would be x squared. Remember, you can't distribute this exponent in. you got to FOIL it out. So that's x minus 12, x minus 12. Okay, I'd love to get out past the foiling. That's great. It's kind of like your training wheels. It's a nice place to start, but I don't want to live with my training wheels on. I'd like to move past it. The shortcut for squaring is you square the first thing, multiply it together, and double it. Why does that keep doing that? I know my handwriting's bad, but it's not that bad. Okay? So, squared the first thing, multiplied together and doubled it, square the last thing, equals 16x. Move the 16x over, so I'm going to subtract the 16x. So then x minus, what would that be, 3040 plus 144, 144, that's a nice word, isn't it? 144 is equal to zero. Now, the, oops, squared. The best advice I could give you guys from here to solve this is do the quadratic formula. Opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over twice a. Okay? In the interest of time in the video, I'm not going to do this because I think it's just going to slow it down. You guys know how to do the quadratic formula. Do it. And that will give you the answers for this. Okay? Here, you got a square root on both sides. Okay, square both sides. 
and you get 2x minus 1 is equal to x plus 4. How about subtract this x over? x minus 1 is equal to 4. Uh, 4. You can say 9. See if I write a 9 if it writes 4. <laughs> nope. Okay, add the 4, or sorry, add the 1 over, and you get 5. Okay, done. So those ones are pretty easy. This, if you make it look like this, then you can do it. How about I subtract the fourth root? Now it's a fourth root to both sides. Then it will resemble this one. It's kind of funny you guys couldn't see it, but I pointed with my other hand to the other side of the screen. See, look, if it looks like this one, uh, but obviously you guys can't see that. Okay. Fourth root. Oops. I don't know why I started to write a two on this side. x plus 3 equals negative fourth root of 2x. Now, on the surface, what it looks like you guys are going to do is, oh, I'm just going to raise both sides to the fourth power, and I'd be finished. Absolutely, yep, but there's a problem right here, just like there was a problem over here in this one. An even root cannot equal something negative, even if what's on the other side is another even root. So what? It, what comes out of an even root has to be positive. That's the rule. So right here, this is bogus. Whoops. There is not going to be a solution to this. An even root equaling something negative. So there's no solution to it. Okay? And I think that's it. Yep. Thanks, you guys, for your patience.